Yo, what's good everyone? Welcome back to ATS Sneakers. My name is Aiden. On today's video, we are taking a look at the Yeezy 350 V2 in the natural colorway. But as always, I just want to say a huge thank you to my returning viewers. Thank you as always for continuing to support me and this channel. And to any new viewers, welcome to the channel. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, hitting that bell notification. We do release brand new content each and every week. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into the intro. Initially releasing on October 24th for a retail price of £180, today we're going to be taking a look at the Yeezy 350 V2 in the aptly named Natural Colorway. Now, like the last few Yeezy releases, originally, this shoe did have a religious name to go along with the release, and I do believe it was going to be called Abes to begin with, but like the last few Yeezy releases, the name had to be changed on religious grounds. So now let's go ahead and get straight into the box. And here we go guys, I now have the box in hand, and as you can see, we just get that usual Yeezy cardboard box with the 350 branding across the top and the Boost branding across the front. Taking a quick look now at the label which reads Yeezy Boost 350 V2 in the Natra 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 colorway. Now for anyone who wants to see it, this is what the label will look like on the box. And now let's go ahead and get into the rest of my review. So getting straight into the shoe, starting with the prime knit upper, we have a white base layer with cream, grey and light brown accents. Also featuring this oatmeal panel above the side stripe which splits from the collar to the toe. Now all of the colours have been combined into this crosshatch stitching, but also integrated into the upper on the shoe, we actually have some reflective materials. Now if you've been around the channel for quite a while, you'll probably already know that I'm a huge fan of reflective sneakers, so that for me is always going to be a massive win. It kind of just makes me feel like a kid when I see reflective sneakers and it's just something that I'm a massive fan of. Now, as far as the actual materials go for the upper, it's really consistent with other 350 V2s. It's exceptionally durable. It's really comfortable on feet. So in that respect, there's absolutely no complaints. But what I would say, just at first glance, it's a little bit odd seeing this shoe release at this time of year. In my mind, this is definitely a summer shoe or even a spring release. So releasing this in autumn as we head into winter, it just feels a little bit odd. I personally couldn't actually imagine wearing this colorway at this stage in the year, but if you can, more power to you, but I would be absolutely terrified of wrecking this colorway. So I think this is definitely something that I'd have to shelve until next summer. Now, before actually recording this video, I did actually speak to quite a few people in regards to this colorway, and I got a lot of mixed reviews in regards to the actual colorway itself. A few people said they really like it, and a lot of other people said that it's just a complete ripoff of other 350 V2 models. But to me, seeing this shoe in hand, it definitely feels like it's got enough about it to actually make it a completely brand new colorway. Now, it does stay true to its name and it does feature all the natural elements that you'll expect with Yeezy releases. But as it's incorporated reflective materials and just the overall color blends and tones that they've used throughout the upper, I feel like it's got enough about it to stand on its own merit as a completely brand new colorway. So for me, I'm a big fan of how it looks. But as I've mentioned, given the time of year, it's just not something that I can see myself wearing. But I'd love to know what you guys think about the colorway itself. Not about the shoe, but the colorway. So drop me a comment in the comment section below and let me know what you guys think about this colorway. And now moving back onto the lateral portion of the shoe. Here we have a monofilament mesh stripe that runs right the way through the lateral portion of the shoe. Now, I personally have managed to get my hands on the last few 350 releases, and I would say that this stripe is a lot more see-through than some of the last few models that I've had in hand. So if you are big on your sock game, this is perhaps a colorway that you might want to consider picking up. If you guys haven't already, please go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification so you never miss a video. Let's get back into it. And now moving down the shoe itself, here we have this semi-translucent pre-yellowed midsole with the usual ribbon that's seen on all other 350 V2 models. Now, if you've never owned a 350 before, the midsole and the outsole definitely does yellow the more you do start to wear it. So when you do get a pre-aged midsole, I'm always all for it. It kind of just takes away the concern of aging the shoe yourself. And I really feel like it balances out the shoe quite well. We have slightly lighter tones on the upper and then these slightly darker tones on the midsole. And I think it all blends together quite nicely. If we switch then to the outsole on the shoe, we see what we saw on the midsole with the pre-yellowed outsole and the Adidas Ultra Boost Tech with the Boost branding towards the heel. 
Now, I've said this on every single 350 review. The 350, in my opinion, is the most comfortable sneaker that I've ever owned or ever had in my collection. I'm still yet to find a single shoe to rival this one. It's exceptionally comfortable. You should already know that by now, but if you don't, as I said, this is definitely the most comfortable shoe that you'll ever buy. And now moving back up the shoe, here we have the ever-present Infinity Lacing System. Now, we did discuss this off camera as to what color the laces are. I'm seeing lots of different tones and different colors. So I, it looks almost like diluted salmon or wheat, stone, peach. So I'm gonna leave it up to you guys to decide, you know, what color the actual laces are because it is really difficult to decide. And to be honest, I'm not the best when it comes to colors. Now, I've already said multiple times why I don't like the Infinity Lacing System, but the more I see it, the more I'm becoming acclimatized to it. So I'm starting to hate it a lot less the more I start to see it on more releases. But if you really don't like the Infinity Laces, in order to remove them, you need to cut them out, effectively destroying them, and then destroying any resale value attached to this shoe. You will then be able to insert the additional set of laces that Adidas have so kindly provided. For me, that's just far too much hassle, and I would personally just leave the Infinity Laces in. And to be honest, like I say, it, it's okay. It's not terrible, but it's not something that I actually like on this shoe. I've also heard a lot of people complaining about the fact that it's actually altered the fit. So I've seen on quite a lot of Facebook groups that people are saying that the shoe feels a lot tighter now because they don't have the ability to loosen the laces. So that is absolutely something you should bear in mind before picking up this shoe. And in terms of sizing, personally, I would say that whenever I do pick up a 350 model, I always go true to size as I do feel like that's the best reflection on me personally. However, as I mentioned earlier on in the video, quite a lot of people are having some issues with the sizing with the new Infinity Laces. So if you do have the opportunity to try out the new version of the shoe before buying, I would highly recommend you do so just so you can understand the best fit for you. And now switching over to the sock liner of the shoe, here we have a primarily white sock liner as well as a primarily white ankle collar. As we move towards the heel portion of the sock liner, we have the ever-present 3M Adidas 3-stripe branding. Switching now to the insole of the shoe, we have this primarily white insole with the Adidas and Yeezy branding. And now to finish taking a look at the heel of the shoe, unfortunately, once again, the heel tab has been removed from this colorway. Now, to be completely honest, it's something that I'm almost expecting now with every single 350 release. And I do think it's gonna be the case for more and more colorways that they do start to release in the future. Come closer. Conspiracy theory time. I don't think they're gonna be including any more heel tabs on any future colorways. Shh, keep that between us. Now, all jokes aside, to be completely honest, I only ever see them now releasing the heel tab on the 350 model when they do bring out those retro colorways. Now, we are expecting to get the bread colorway later on in the year. And to be honest, it's gonna have the heel tab as expected. But when it comes to brand new colorways like the natural colorway and even future releases going on into 2021, I wouldn't expect to get any more heel tabs. It's a really disappointing thing for me. I've always said that I'm a big fan of how it works, how it looks on the shoe. So the fact that I feel like they're not going to include it anymore is just a massive disappointment. Now that just about wraps up the overview of the shoe itself. So now let's go ahead and get into my opinions on the shoe. And in terms of my overall opinion on the shoe itself, I do give the Yeezy 350 V2 in the natural colorway a very respectable eight out of 10. To be honest, I'm a big fan of this colorway. It's just a little bit disappointing given the time of year. I think if they would have released this colorway in the summer of 2020 or the summer of 2021, it would have had a much bigger reception and the hype would have been a lot more intense. Unfortunately, given the time of year, like me, I can see a lot of people shelving this particular colorway and not being able to wear it for quite a while. So that for me is a massive disappointment. I'd love to know what you guys think as well. So please go ahead and drop me a comment in the comment section below. And let's go ahead and take a look at the shoe in more detail. Now, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who stuck around to this point in the video. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, hitting that bell notification, and I hope to see you again in the next one. If you guys enjoyed that video, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel here, checking out our latest video here, and also don't forget to check out our latest playlist right here. It couldn't be easier.